Welcome to the lecture, Gas and FTAs. The General Agreement on Trade in Services, GATS. Under GATS, Canada agreed to make it easier for foreign business people to access the Canadian service market. This applied to service providers from more than 140 World Trade Organization member countries. Three groups of business people are covered under this agreement. They are the business visitors, the professionals, and the intra-company transferees. Qualified business people can enter Canada more easily because they do not need an LMIA from the Government of Canada or, in the case of business visitors, a work permit. So here we are on the website of the International Mobility Program, focused on the General Agreement on Trade and Services, and in this page of the Government of Canada, we can see more information about the GATS. Uh, it said very here, very clearly here, that allow temporary entry of business person under the General Agreement on Trade in Services GATS can facilitate without the need of a labor market impact assessment, as we mentioned before. And in the area of temporary entry of individuals, Canada requested and offered access to three categories of business people business people, uh, business visitor, intra-company transferee, and professionals. So basically, both business visitor and intra-company transferee entering under GATT qualify under Canada's generally applicable immigration rules, thus uh, Regulation 186A and Regulation 205A and C12, okay? So, however, there are unique rules for entry of professionals under GATT. This professional may be granted work permit pursuant to Art uh, Regulation 204, and T33, if they meet the criteria below. So there's some specification that we mentioned before, and these conditions of admission are here listed as the prof uh, professionals. So the occupations are covered in, uh, in by groups, and what we can see here, occupations covered, we have group one, and they have six occupations in that group, engineers, agrologists, architects, forestry professionals, geomatics professionals, and land surveyors. And that's group one. And group two, we have three occupations, foreign legal consultants, urban planners, and senior computer specialists. Professionals in this group are subject to additional requirements per pertinent to the prospective enterprise in Canada and the foreign service provider. So you can see here uh, the difference now with these groups uh, under GATS, and it's important to know their requirements. For example, if we go to group one, occupation, engineer, they're going to need to meet a minimum educational requirement of a bachelor degree and a provincial license because it's a regulated profession. For the agrologist, bachelor degree in agriculture or related science plus four years of related experience and other requirements will be licensing in New Brunswick, Alberta and Quebec and then prior licensing required in British Columbia. Every province has different requirements for certain professions. What is regulated in one province, not necessarily is going to be regulated in another province or it won't be regulated in the same way. So that's why it's important to check in the province that you're going to, to work, especially if you're going through this agreement. If you're going on the one of these free trade agreements, you need to check the requirements of your profession in the province that you plan to settle. Okay? Architects, again, bachelor degree is a minimum requirement. And the other requirements will be the provincial license and certificate required to practice. And again, they continue to do the same with every other occupation in the list. And group two, for example, foreign legal consultant, they're going to ask for a bachelor degree in law and a provincial license. And again, every profession has the education and the re minimum requirement. So it's important to know. Remember that those uh, bachelor degree have to be equivalent to the Canadian system, and you use agencies like West to accredite your education in Canada. Besides the the province license, that you need to do another process on top of that. So keep that in mind. But this is information. The page uh, link will be provided in the lecture. But take a look at this, and let's continue with the other free trade agreements. Other free trade agreements. Canada has signed other free trade agreements with other countries. We can mention the following. Canada-Chile FTA, Canada-Peru FTA, the Canada-Colombia 
FDA and the Canada Korea FDA. There's other programs that are being worked on right now, the Pacific Partnership and also with potential countries like China. So the best way to keep you update is to go to the website of the Government of Canada. And one recently that was signed was the Canada European Union Comprehensive Economic and Trade Agreement, CETA. These agreements are modeled on NAFTA to make it easier for business people from one country to enter another country for a short time. The rules are similar to those under NAFTA and cover business people such as business visitors, professionals, intra-company transferees, and traders and investors. And here is the end of the lecture. Check the next uh, video and enjoy and we'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you very much.